you know, I was just sitting here thinking, why do you want to live well? Currently, we have van life. We have the tiny house movement. And we have people living in their cars. And they'll come on YouTube and social media like, hey, I'm living in a van. It's the best thing ever. But it's funny once their social media blows up and they start getting money, they move into an apartment or a house. It's funny how I keep seeing this happen over and over and over. So van life, car life, tiny house movement is predicated on income, not desire. That's the root. That's where this really starts. It starts with income because out of 160 million working Americans, 75 million people make low income which is $33,000 per year or less. And, you know, we don't have these conversations because it's funny. You know, I'll put up one of the rich people of Atlanta house videos and I'll get haters. Yet someone like Omni and the Hellcat can be talking about stunning all day long and people just lap it up. It's funny because, you know, I was thinking about that. I was just like, why does he get to put up all these videos and people just lap it up? But I talk about living well, then, you know, well, what you're trying to say, man, you live in a rich neighborhood, blah, 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 blah. And it's funny. I think age has something to do with it. Young people like to see young people stunning so they can feel that they perhaps can live that way one day or, you know, it, it, it's just wild how that that happens, because, you know, if I, I'm going to put up some more of the rich people of Atlanta videos and I'm just deleting all negative comments. I'm not even going to get into it with these people who are mental pygmies because it's interesting because we will talk about expectation. How many of you expect to have a rich and rewarding life? How many of you have ever thought about how my life is going to be the next five years, the next 10 years, the next 15 years, the next 20 years? How many of you sat down and said, this is how I want to live for the next five years? This is how I want to live the next 10 years. This is how I want to live. Because right now I'm on a 10 year plan. You know, I'm 53 years old. I'll be 63 in 10 years, nine years and a few months. And I'm planning how I want to live. I'm planning because all of this stuff you see, the house, the cars, they were planned. I didn't just pop up into these situations. It all became a plan after the storage auction business. And how many are you planning to live well? How many of you are planning to live the life that you want, not live the life that is handed to you, not live the life that you can elk out? Because I'm going to tell you something. Living well in the future takes planning, discipline, and I'm going to say the S word, sacrifice today. This is one of the things that you've got to do. This is one of the things that you've got to wrap your mental around. That if I want to have a brighter better tomorrow i need to make diligent plans for that today because one of the things i've noticed and this this is something i see frequently in my neighborhood i see elderly people who are 70 80 years old 
I'll see him walking. And I'm like, you're walking this morning. You're retired. You've planned your life so well that you can live in this multi-million dollar neighborhood and your health is good enough for you to do these long walks. And there's one guy who I swear dude's got to be 80 something dude runs or shuffles and he'll shuffle for a few miles. And I mean, it's just remarkable how, and this is something I've noticed about 11 years ago when I moved into this neighborhood that the elderly over here are radically different than the elderly that I have encountered in my previous lives. They have money. They're, they're living in a nice house. They're comfortable. Their golden years are really golden. They've got money to give their kids. They've got money to spoil their grandkids. And, you know, I look at that and I go, that's amazing. But it was part of a larger plan. It was part of sitting down and thinking. So where do you plan on being in the next 10 years? Because go to paraphrase one of my neighbors growing up, Sally Mae Jones. Rest in peace, Sally Mae. She used to say this to me all of the time. If you live long enough, one day you're going to be old. So to extrapolate that, to really get into it, whether you plan for tomorrow or you don't plan for tomorrow, tomorrow's coming. Tomorrow's going to be here. Tomorrow is going to show up knock on your door and say hello so are you planning for tomorrow or are you just existing for tomorrow are you really putting together some stuff because like i said once again you could become wealthy in three to ten years depending on what you're doing how hard you work or you can slowly try to play the investment game and hopefully have a million or two dollars when you 65. That's if everything goes all right. And that's if you have income to consistently contribute to your contribution 401 case. Because this is one of the things I recently read an article where the 401ks are not working for most Americans. And part of the reason is that it's voluntary. If it was mandatory, the success rate would be higher because like Social Security, they just take it out your check. 7%, 15%, they just take it out your check. And that is why when you turn 65, you can go down to the Social Security office and you can get a check because you've been dutifully contributing to social security up until I think they stopped taking social security out your check at 92 because they ain't going to give you any more than that. I think the highest, I don't even know. Let me go ahead and Google this. What is the highest social security? What's the highest social security benefit allowed? What is the maximum Social Security benefit? The most an individual who files a claim for Social Security retirement benefits in 2009 can receive per month is 3700 for someone who files at age 70. It's $2,861 for someone who files at full retirement age, currently 66 so if you wait until 70, you get almost a grand per month if you wait four years. Wow, that's a substantial difference. And that's dependent upon your contributions. These would be the people who've had very high incomes and got taxed at the max. You're not going to get the max just showing up. Um. To receive the maximum possible Social Security benefit, you need to earn more 
than Social Security maximum taxable earning in at least 35 individual years throughout your career. So you got to be making six figures for 35 years to get that maximum benefit. Most folks are getting 800 to 1500 bucks. That's where most folks are getting it. And, you know, once again, this, this goes back to you planning your life. I mean, you got to plan your life. And I know many people get upset with me talking about success, getting money, building lives, that how many men are getting married. I know the MGTOs and the red pill men are like, oh, no, I'm going to tell you with that, it is the poor MGTO and poor red pill men. Because you know what? I know a guy. And he had a very young wife. Dude was about 60-something. His wife was 30. And I knew him, and we used to talk, and I was like, so you got married, huh? He said, look, I know she married me. One of the, He said, one of the reasons that she married me was I have money. I'm fully 100% aware of that. And another one of the reasons that she married me is we're friends. And I think that poor MGTO and poor red pill men can't wrap their heads around that because they're so afraid of getting got that they know that they don't understand that there are men out there who know what the game is. They know what time it is. And they know why this is happening, but they have the option to be 60 years old and marry a hot 30-year-old woman. They have those options. And the way the game is, as I have grown older, success is to be shared. Success, because the thing is, you got a whole bunch of money, you're living well, and you buy yourself. That really doesn't float very well. And one of the things that you can understand, and one of the things that many people don't seem to grasp or get their head wrapped around is money is more fun when you have someone you can spend with that you enjoy their company that you're having fun and I, i'm just saying this because you know a lot of dudes have got this wealth thing twisted because you go ahead and get like uh, millions of dollars and you're super cheap, you super frugal. You know, like Graham Stevens, that whole that that that's pathologically cheap. You got an income of one hundred and sixty thousand dollars per month and you still clipping coupons. That's ridiculous. And this is why a lot of people can't move on because many people have a very fundamentally flawed relationship with money. I've been broke. I've been poor. I know what it's like to live like that. And I understand. I know what it's like to have money. And there needs to be happy balance. You know, no, you shouldn't be out there blowing all your money on frivolous things. However, if you want to have a cup of coffee, and you're a millionaire, that ain't going to put a dent into your net worth. Not at all. And I think it's just ridiculous that some of these habits, because that's the whole movement now, to be pathologically cheap, to be super thrifty, to have a whole bunch of money, but don't be spending it. Like a lot of people like to talk about Kawhi Leonard, and, you know, he's in the NBA, $100 million contract, and he's driving this old truck. That, you know, and one of the things is the truck is souped up and it costs like a hundred grand. But once again, all people, people like this narrative because it doesn't make them feel less than for not achieving. It doesn't take them into a certain place in life because here's the thing. Life, as I learned listening to Earl Nightingale years ago, can be whatever you want it to be. It can, but you 
at some point have got to make the decision and put some fire and effort behind that decision. That's what you got to do. So hopefully this message came to you at the appropriate time. Hopefully you are ready to live well and make those decisions because one of the things we do here is we give you a financial education. We teach you how to make money. You could just watch the videos and soak up the knowledge and start applying this knowledge to your life. This is Glendon Cameron. I'll see you in the next video.